All right, welcome back to another video tutorial on shebang modules. And this time I'm going to be introducing the Stochastic Sequencer Grid. And uh, this is the new cool complex rhythmic uh, sequencer that I just added to the shebang collection. And it has four independent voices and each cell can be controlled by probability. You know, this is just like the other stochastic sequencers modules that I have. Um, so whether or not they'll happen, uh, zoom in here. So you have a, a cell probability knob. And then the other cool thing is you actually have um, rhythms that you can, or subdivisions per cell. So if we just listen to like the purple sequencer, um, and the, there's these little indicators of the direction that that um, each color will will go. So so without any let's slow it down too slow. So without any subdivisions, it's basically just 16 notes. I'll give this one. So you can see that there, we, we can go all the way up to 16th. And you can command click to turn some off or on. And the other cool thing is, not only do you have a cell probability, so uh, you know I can change the probability of whether or not this cell happens, but you have a rhythm probability. So um, if, for example, the rhythm probability is at zero, but uh, the cell happens, then just a single note will happen, will, will will trigger. So this. So this one right here, it's basically a probability of whether or not the subdivision will play. So if we listen to it now, um, this is set to zero, so we won't hear these subdivisions. Yeah. So set it to 50%, and then sometimes we'll hear it, sometimes not. If I set the cell to 50%, we might not even hear anything like that. So uh, when the cell is at 50%, you can kind of think, and this is also at 50%, then that basically gives it a 25% chance of a single note happening and a 25% chance of the subdivision happening. So. Um, anyway, so so it's very complex and it's it's still new in my you know in my own uh, world that I'm still exploring things. Um, so in this video, I'm just going to do a couple of basic things. One, I'm going to start off with like making kind of like a snare beat here or a drum set beat. And let's see. So let's turn it back up to where I had it. Get this snare happen. And I don't want that to happen. Um, let's see, I want this note to happen. And actually I want it to sometimes do two notes. Don't want that to happen. And I can kind of do, uh, I want to sometimes play this note. So I'll put this maybe about there.
And let's add a little bit of base here. I'm going to do the red. And the other thing to notice is that um, we have these different paths. So at the default path um, will be, you know, if I set this to 16, the purple will just traverse the entire grid, left to right, each each row. And, and the blue here will traverse the grid going down, top to bottom for each row. And... Um, you know, so each of these uh, sequencers have their own direction and their their own default direction. However, I can do make it a random path, <clears throat> and and it'll use the length to determine. Uh, it'll just randomly pick within this length. So if I have four, it'll it'll pick uh, one of these four cells. If I did, you know, eight. It'll pick one of the eight cells, and so forth. You know, I could do all of them by selecting uh, 16. Um, now, the other thing is the random walk, and this ignores the path length, and only picks, it'll randomly pick cells that are adjacent to the current cell that it's on. So you can kind of, uh, you know, if, if you create a, some sort of gradual uh, accelerating rhythm um, from one side to another then you could you know almost kind of get that sense um, or if you want all this, the rhythms to be kind of somewhat related to each other uh, based on their cells being next to each other then that would be useful for that but anyway uh, so I'm gonna keep purple at default for now and red Okay, so I want red to go slower. Um, and I'm going to set that. Oh, and then you also have different rates here. You can turn them on and off. And you can set them to play at different speeds based on the uh, tempo. Um, so this is kind of like a multiplier or divider. that You're setting the fraction. And I want the red to go twice as slow. So don't want, I'm going to do a little thing here. There we go. Okay, so there's our rhythmic, our beat is happening there. Now I'm going to add some, uh, let's see, little hi hat sounds, or, um, and let's see. So blue's going to be doing that, and I want it to randomly move around. Since, um, and we also have CV control, um, so I'll, I'll use the aqua color to kind of control the CV, you know, the cutoff frequency for the, the hi-hats here. Um, now, you also have, you have a couple of options for the CV. Um, one volt, two volts, plus or minus five volts or ten volts, so... Um, I'll try that. Let's see what we got. And I think I'm going to, you know, just make this go random as well. So 
slow it down. So you get the idea, and um, there's also, we have different patterns that I can select or, um, using this knob, and there's, they're kind of grouped differently. Uh, use, it goes from one, where they're all two, three, and then five. Um, I'm using the Fibonacci um, series, and probably you probably are hearing my son in the background. Um, and just different patterns um, based on that. Um, and then the last group, keep scrolling away from me, last group is based on randomness. Um, and let's see, what else was I going to say? Oh, and then as a little tip for, you know, instead of having to count all of these, there's a little indicator up here that will tell you whichever your mouse is hovering over. So for these larger ones, you don't have to remember, you know, it could be 13 um, or 16. It's very difficult to tell the difference, you know, if you have them um, similar. And um, you can click and scroll left or right, or you can change that scroll option to increase or decrease them. You can click to increase them or you can hold shift and click and it doubles them. Um, so if you're at you know, triplet you get six. And, um, so you can, you, you can do that and then command click will turn the ones that you click on off. You can click and drag for that. You can, um, you know, if you click, if you command click off of any of the circles, it'll just turn them all back on. So if you have a, some random thing happening here, um, you can do that. So those are some of the, the you know, little keyboard shortcuts and, and uh, mouse interaction stuff. Okay. So that's our drum beat. Now here's another one down here where I was using some pitch. And these are technically CV, but um, you can also control uh, pitch with it. And I didn't include a quantizer in this because I, I mean, it was meant to purposely, was a uh, rhythmic sequencer um, and that's its focus, and I just didn't have much room on here to add the quantization, um, so I left it to be an external thing, you know, with VCV racks or whatever you want to use. Um, so, so in this case, I've set the volt range to 10 volts, and then I um, have them go merging into this poly polyphonic channel and then um, and then I can control their uh, their pitch range with this 8 vert so 20% is just going to be 2 volts so basically 2 octaves here so let's listen to uh, the purple sequence oh, after I unmute it And we can add more. So, 
So in this case, I, um, I need that mute button over here. In this case, I I fed the aqua channel or CV output to uh, this octave shifter and uh, shifted it down an octave, and then that goes into the polyphonic channel, and then into our quantizer and all that fun stuff. And they're all hooked up to a gate right here. Cool. Yeah, so you can hear I'm using um, each of the patterns uh, at different rates, and I can control uh, some of their output. Uh, or I'm, I'm using one of them by shifting its octave down, and and then all of that goes to this eight vert where I can kind of control it as two octaves um, into a quantizer. And, uh, and it gives us this nice little texture, uh, kind of a melodic texture with some counterpoint in there. And, and, th and I'm adding some rhythmic subdivisions as well. Um, let's keep it down here. Okay. Okay, I hope that kind of gives you a starting point for the stochastic sequencer grid. Um, this is by no means a comprehensive look at the module, but just kind of shows you some of the uh, basic ideas and, and a good starting point to um, for this you know somewhat complex module um, all right I'm looking forward to seeing your ideas and how you use it thanks for watching and please like and subscribe see you next time